Suzuki book two. So I'm continuing with my analysis uh, on the second book. So right in the beginning, it starts off with a tonalization exercise. And this is the first time that you are gonna play with low one. So it's trying to get you to play low one. And it's saying that be careful when you play low one, your third finger uh, might get dragged down with it. So that's what this is for. So the main focus is pretty self-explanatory. The bottom one is like play um, three one and then three low one while keeping the third finger in place. So you could feel like the distance apart, right? The line for the three means keep the three there. And that's it for that. Next, of course, Judas Maccabeus. Um, I see it as starting off simple. And there's um, there's a bunch of stuff that's packed together. So it's, it almost seems like a review of Suzuki Book 1. Um, it has like a bunch of different stuff. Um, it has like crescendo, decrescendo, different dynamics, uh, dotted rhythms. It also has, I think this might be new, uh, a tied note, but with two lines on them. That means that means that you could you could explain to your student. It means like how it works. Like you don't actually tie it. You have to separate. The note separate it like that. And you explain how you how to separate, like do a little nudge or however you want to explain it. And that's it. There's some um ex there's some like natural symbols, sharps. They're still doing that thing where they where they uh, put a little sharp next to the numbers <laughs> because some people are still going to be reliant on the numbers, I guess. You should probably explain to your student, like try not to continuously explain, try not to rely on the numbers too much, but it does help you. It does help you to like get fun right away if you just follow the numbers, right? But of course, try to build your experience by reading the actual notes. So just understand and that's it. Uh, number two, Musette. There is a bunch. There's like three, one, two, zero. There is crescendo, decrescendo while doing that. So there's one thing right there, um, playing that, increasing your bow speed, and then going like louder and then into a piano. And then louder. There's a lot of dynamic changes as I see now. So like loud, soft, loud, soft. There's a lot of dynamic changes and there's a lot of uh, slur, not slur, slur, not slur, slur, not slur, right here. Dynamic changes again. So 
Uh, one, one big thing is the, the Boeings. So I would extra pay attention to the Boeings because it seems to have a lot of variation. There's also like uh, four notes in one slur, but also piano. So that requires like a lot, like really careful. Also, if you usually if you try to do like piano like that, um, it's easy to it's easy to like slow down your tempo. So you should probably like take extra care to make sure you don't slow down the tempo. Also, I think in the new version is I'm not sure, but I think maybe in the new version it says the second time repeat you can do a retard. It does make sense uh, if you do a retard the second time though. Even from a learning perspective, because you can you can like explain like first time no retard, second time retard. Like it's good to be able to do both as well. Alright, next. New patterns. There's a pickup, but you already did a pickup in the previous book, but it's a good review. I think this pattern is new, so you should probably focus on trying to make it more like even. And then there's also a string cross during that, so it, it's a rather difficult pattern. Also, um, if you're like string crossing, that could be difficult to like time correctly because you might not be familiar with the time it takes, exact time it takes to go from like D string to A string. So that could mess up your evenness of your 16 notes. So you can like metronome it up from slow to fast as well. There is quite a bit of two short notes, two short eight notes. There's um, there's long notes plus short notes like There's that. There's also an accent. Uh, I don't know if this is the first time. I think there was an ac There was accents in the first book. So, but there's this pattern's new. I think. I think that's new. There's also. Accent, dot dot, accent. So accent, short flicks. Uh. There's a fortissimo double forte accent. So try to use a lot of bow for that. I think that's all for this one. Long, long ago again. So have some fun and then <laughs> learn variation. <laughs> so this one is pretty straightforward. That it's just saying do this, learn this pattern, which is two slurs, up up, two notes slurred up up with flicks, short with dots. So pretty straightforward way to learn is slow to fast and you make sure that your articulation is as clean as possible. So, so for the slur ones, try to smooth it out as much as you can. And then for the dots, make nice flicks.
then try to retain the quality when you increase the tempo and slowly increase the tempo. There's even a loud soft while doing that pattern. That's it for that one. Next is waltz. I think this is your first waltz rhythm. Bon cha cha, bon cha cha. <coughs> you can explain how waltzes work. It's a dance, bon cha cha, and it's three beats in a measure. One, two, three, one, two, three. So, that is the main thing of this piece to give you a feeling of the waltz and so you can learn one two three one two three and there's also grace notes I think that grace notes might be new as well it explains some of the the words like how dolce means sweet to play sweetly to me you play both smoothly vibrato a lot <laughs> Nothing new, but the little grace notes. You can explain, like, grace notes, you fit it in, um, but it doesn't affect the actual rhythm. So it's like, st you f even though you fit it in, it's still one, two, three. I think the three, three is new. So put the fr one finger in between two strings. Right there. So you don't have to move. Uh, there's a long stretched out crescendo. It's like mini, a little bit of a retard. So this is where you learn poco means a little bit. And then that might be your first PP or pianissimo. Not sure. And that's it for this one. I think the the main takeaway is the waltz rhythm and the grace notes and the long crescendo. That's it for that one. Here we have a very nice, nice sounding piece. A lot of dynamic changes here. So I think this piece is all about dynamic changes. So really, um, little bow speed to fast bow speed, little bow distance to a lot of bow distance, little bow weight to a lot of bow weight. And if you can control that through a stretched out part, it would be pretty nice. It's like... I think that's the main takeaway for this this one. There's some like there's like a sharp right here that might be new. That one. That one feels kind of new and weird. So make sure you stretch your third finger high enough. Next, two grenadiers. Uh, the new thing is the rhythm. Da 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 da. da. There's um. So that's new. So make sure 
sure you get, like, get that grid. There's a lot of mood changes in here. So I think um, you should definitely take focus on the mood changes. The beginning sounds like kind of like a march to war, right? And then right here, it becomes like, what's this, agitato? So I guess you're a little agitated, but it's also soft. So you're like sneaking or being careful or something bad happened. But like, even though it's quiet, that pattern's like, duh, it's, it's like, duh, 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 that pattern keeps coming back. First, it's a march. With this pattern. And then... So there's a mood change, so maybe it's like a challenge to see if you could do the mood change. And then after the mood change, bitch, there's like a kind of a bubbling up, intensifying feeling. I think you they kind of change you for this with the long crescendos from the previous songs. Pieces, not songs. <laughs> So it's like the same as before, um, it's like bubbling up, crescendoing, but now it goes, it takes it a step far, further and it's telling you to go a little bit faster. So it's like you're going even more intense. And then here's another mood change, and it's like even more insane mood change because the key itself changed. And it changes from one flat to two sharps. That's insane, like it never happened before, right? So that's like, it's like two skills that you might have to practice. Also, it sounds kind of minor in the beginning, and then now it's very major. So that's a huge, huge, huge mood change. So that's that's really new. It would be ideal if in the previous pieces that you've played, you were very, you followed, um, you followed tempo very exact. If you were like a goody two shoes student, if you follow like the tempo is all very exact, like with your metronome and everything, you might be able to feel the different tempo changes more easily. So just be aware that there's a lot of tempo changes in here. Uh, and you want to try to feel the difference between the tempo changes and the mood changes also. <laughs> Again, like it doesn't even say anything, but I could feel like the mood changes. And it goes into big march again. Now that's it for this one. Next one, which is dance. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing that pops out right away is triplets. So you could explain what a triplet is, three notes. You could explain like tri a triplet against a duplet, like what that, what's the difference, but how it feels different, triplet, triplet. And then it keeps playing on that dotted pattern, dot, 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 the dotted pattern with the slur plus the dot. Now it's doing like two in a row. And then like it changes from duplet to triplet. So the student should understand 
the difference between triplet and duplet and how it fits in and how it feels different, right? And then what's another crazy part is there's kind of a key change right here. So you should pay attention to like which fingers are close together in this in order to stay in tune. Like the one is suddenly low. And then the pinky and three the pink is suddenly low. And then it's really close to the third finger. And then the two, one is suddenly close. That probably threw a lot of people off. On top of that, it's soft. It's P. That is a lot, a lot to think about, right? And then at the end, there's like a grand finale where the witches, I guess they're like doing their final dance and they just spam you with triplets. It's like triplet, 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 triplet. You have to be able to continuously get your triplets out without messing up. So you really have to feel the triplet. If you put yourself against the metronome, see if you're correct or not. So that's that. Here is see, uh, the next one, Gewaffer Mignon. It seems like they're trying to pull you into the world of trills. They're trying to get you into trilling. And this is where you can explain what a trill is and how, what it does, what it feels like, what it sounds like. And it's using 30 second notes to like get you in. And the, I think the reason it, they wrote 30 second notes instead of a trill is that like they want exact presses, like exact accuracy. So that might be a good call to write it like that. Also, it starts with like all dots, so you're as right when you're getting used to this flicking. All of a sudden, there's no dots, and then you have to like switch to smooth bows. And here it comes. It's like a precise introduction to trilling, I guess, because they're like. A really weird sharp out of nowhere so remember to stretch your finger to reach it a lot of people get thrown off from that so there is a triplet out of, in nowhere out of nowhere in the middle this really throws people off too right here where it, there's like a key change with a low one Low one plus high two. It's like, it's like this is a, it's like a trap. See, first, and then all of a sudden, this big. It's not normal. Um, for this, I think it's important to make sure the mood changes from like sad to happy, or like make the low one and. A big enough of a difference with the the higher one to change the mood. Right. There's a mood change right here. Also key change, mood change and key change. Low pinkies everywhere. So I think uh, it's important to like explain. The pinky and the three continuously have to stay together really close. Otherwise it's easy to get out of tune. Okay, so 
the, at the end, there's also like, is that your first pits? Maybe not, but it's pits. <laughs> There's two up bows. Uh, you should explain that the two up bows is to get you get your hand closer, so that you can fix. So now I'm closer. I can reach it faster. And it's important to get the pits on time, according to the tempo you're playing at. So if it's not on time, you should just turn the tempo slower, so you could get it on time. Oh, miss, sir. <laughs> so turn the tempo slower. There's also chords like that, so you should explain how the chords work. The first one is easy because it's two opens and then just one. And then the second one is a B. So you can also explain how to practice chords. You could explain like just figure out one at a time. B, find the B, then find the G, then find the G. Then make sure they're good together and then do the whole thing. Uh, and then a little ear training. Um, explain how this is supposed to help train you so you have G you have open strings which is like supposedly always right right if your violin's in tune so your teacher should have made sure that it was in tune but if you learned tuning early on which I think it's a good idea then you're assuming your instrument is in tune you only really have to match the second note to the to the open string which is assumed to be correct so if you're a little off, you could you could like hear that it doesn't match as well, or you can move your finger around. Until they kind of become the same note. Right? And also pay attention to the angle of your bow. Make sure that the weight of your bow is like the same weight on both strings when you do it this. This exercise should be practiced daily until it is mastered. The teacher should hear this at the beginning of each lesson. <laughs> Gotta master it. Alright, so next, Gavat. Here's the first time you have a kind of a little cocky little cadenza part, I think. So you have what seems to be like normal piece. Um, let's see. Oh, the the third in the third line, there's like a hard rhythm. Oh, there's a three three again. Put the finger between the two strings. Probably haven't done that much. Yet. Here's a hard rhythm. That's like really hard. Uh, there's a real trail right here. So a teacher should explain uh, how to make trills sound good so the way I like to say it trills should be more so even uh, so it's not about being fast first you have to make sure that your hits are even and and your fingers like each hit is all the way down so that it can be clear and then after that then maybe try to make it faster so it's actually more important to be even uh, for it to sound, it actually makes it sound faster for some reason to me. And 
And then that's the first time where you have kind of a like, like a cadenza, like a show off y part. We just take off kind of. That's also the first time where you do like a pinky stretch right here. And then here, here's a huge gap between the G sharp and the low one. So it's all, it's like it's like it's time for you to show off. And then uh, that 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 difficult rhythm comes back. Same thing with the the finger between the strings. And it's probably gonna throw off a lot of people in the beginning. And then it ends with the trill. And then at the bottom they have a little practice for that. Make sure you separate separate the notes instead of like kind of sliding it. It's easy to just like kind of mush it together. Really try to separate it. And that's that one. Next we have minuet and G. Here's a really new um, pattern. You have the previously difficult and still difficult dotted dotted rhythm right but now you have to accent during certain notes during that see honestly you can kind of if if you can um i don't know there's like several ways to do this right accents are like you push your bow like you do a little boost in your bow and it, it like pops off. It pops off an accent. Right? But if you can do vibrato, some people can <laughs> by now. Those people who are usually like, teacher, teach me vibrato, like day one, <laughs> by now they might be able to do some vibrato. There's some, some people are like day one. All I, all I want to learn is vibrato. <laughs> I don't want to learn anything else. So if you can do vibrato by now, you can do the you can do the accents mostly with your vibrato by like doing a little jolt in your left hand. And just land a little bit harder and immediately vibrato. I think that sounds pretty good. Of course like a little tiny little push in your bow helps too. That's the main thing for for this piece and then now in the trio there is like continuous up bows with up bow flicks so same thing practice carefully with make sure your flicks are good quality before you go faster because when you go faster you lose quality so Carefully flick these. At first, maybe like that. And then you have to do a piano too. And this is where you can learn about um, first ending, repeat, and then take the second ending, and then first ending, second ending, and then DC al fine. But I think you already learned DC al fine from the previous book. If you don't remember that, I could just explain again. 
the next piece is the last piece so i guess this book two seems shorter it has fewer pieces as it's now getting to the point where there's like fewer like completely new technique or whatnot or trick right i feel like this piece kind of just tests you on everything that you learned Oh, there's like a syncopated rhythm, I guess. Dun, 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 dun. So this is, you can explain what syncopated rhythm means. There's trills, there's grace notes. There's like everything that you learned before in one package. There's like a trill plus grace notes. There's a counting section with rest. Rest, rest, rest. Uh, rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. With syncopation too. So, uh, first explain how to count that, and how like a quarter rest equals two eighth rest. So you could just count three one two three da 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 da, and then two eighth rest, rest rest da 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 da, like where the beats are, and then that quarter note right there is worth two eighth notes. Uh, click it out with the metronome slowly and you'll get it. It's like, and then you have like rest, rest, da 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 da, rest, rest, right? And then at the end, you have an eighth rest plus a quarter rest, so it's like rest, 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 it's like triple rest. All of a sudden, after you got used to two rests, it gives you a three rest. So don't get thrown off by that. What? Rest, rest, rest. worthy test piece for the end of book two I think and that's the end of book two so thank you for the feedback for the previous uh, Suzuki book one anal anal analysis um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below thank you have a nice day